Hello, this is Algebra. So, version of a line is y equals kx. It's called direct variation. We're not going to worry too much about the name. We're just looking at y equals x. Now, you from previous uh, math courses like Algebra 1. Direct variation, K is the slope. And what the y-intercept is always zero. If the y-intercept was somewhere else, then this would not be y-intercept is the slope. The y-intercept is at zero, zero. Half y equals Slope is negative three. And my y intercept, since it is in the form of direct variation and there's no extra number over here, the y intercept is zero, zero. When you type answers into Canvas, three, you need to type answer as parentheses zero, comma, zero, close parentheses. If you type in anything different, wrong. <clears throat> give it slightly differently. So y intercept zero, zero. But to use the slope, I always want to think about the slope. Negative three. So if I change negative 3 into a fraction, then I can find the rise versus the run. That fraction could be negative 3 over 1. If that's the case, and I rise negative 3, it actually means I go down 1, 2, 3, and running a positive 1 would mean to the right. So I'm kind of making some stairs. But it can Four, six. That is the exact same as going down three over. There to go negative three over equation negative star. So I would make it. positive 3 over negative 1, that's going to mean 3, but left 1. 3, left 1. Same pattern. So we can now connect all of these points a straight edge, and we have a line. So now you're going to try. Um, for example, two uh, graphs are down below, but in this big empty space, I want to see your work. And your work literally could just be you writing down that the slope is 2 over 5, and the y-intercept is 0, 0. That's minimum work. You do need So on my graph, I'm going to start at my y-intercept of 0, 0. And then we're going to run positive 5, so right 1. So we're going to up 2, right. Okay, and then I can. Direction, I'm going to have negative 2, negative 5. So I'll have to go down to left. 
down to left 5. And then I will connect those for a straight line. The next one, y equals negative x, is a little trickier. <clears throat> This is the same thing as writing negative 1x, but negative 1x is not simplified. So that's why the 1's not written there. So our slope for this one is negative 1. Our y-intercept for all of these in the form direct variation is 0, 0. So we're going to begin at 0, 0. And then the slope is negative 1, but I need that as a fraction. So I can write negative 1 divided by 1, or I could write 1 over negative 1. And we're going to go down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, down 1, right 1, and so on. Or we can go up 1, left, up 1, left, up 1, left. And use your straight edge to combine those points into a line. One thing that you need to know and start recognizing is that any time we have a negative slope, our line will be going downhill from left to right. From left to right, it will be going downhill. This is kind of just a quick little check to make sure you used your slope correctly. Here, in question two, my slope was positive. And if I have a positive slope, my line is going to be going uphill from left to right, uphill. And then finally, number two has a negative slope. And that makes the line go downhill. All right, the next four uh, lines is called slope intercept form y equals mx plus b is the formula, m is the slope, and b is a y coordinate, coordinate <laughs> of the y intercept. But our y intercept is 0b. So when you type answers in Canvas, you have to have the ordered pair for the y-intercept. So we are going to graph y equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. To start graphing that one, I first need to write down my slope and my y-intercept. See, my slope is negative 3 over 2, and my y-intercept well, the coordinate is 4, so I need to write 0, 4. So when I do this, the B stands for begin. And my slope, the M, stands for move. So I'm going to begin at 0, 4. And I'm going to use this point and I'm going to move using my slope, rise over run. I'm going to go down three, right two. 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 And so on. I can also go up three, left two. Up three, left two. Up three, left two. So now we have some questions for you to try. You're going to look at this and you're going to say my slope, or the M, is 2. We do not include the X. The X is a variable in the equation. The 2 is the actual slope. And then our Y-intercept, 
is 0 comma negative 6. The B value is negative 6, but the intercept is 0 negative 6. So this is your correct answer. This is your correct answer. When you go to graph the slope, we are going to think 2 over 1. So we can have that rise over run. All right, so question 3, begin at 0, negative 6. Put a point there. And now we're going to move up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. I didn't say this earlier, but make sure we have arrows because that means that the graph goes on forever in both directions. So question four, our slope is negative one over two and our y-intercept is zero, five. So we will begin at zero, five. And we will go down one over two. Down one over two. Okay, and there's the finished graph for that one. Example three is called transformation form. Um, when we use transformation form, we will be using this kind of form for almost the entire year of Algebra 2. I don't really use it for lines that much, but since we use it for a lot of other um, equations, I'm going to go ahead and use it for lines to start. So this is the form that you are going to use the m value, which is the slope. And then there is an x1, oops, x1 comma a y1, and that is an ordered pair. That is just any ordered pair on the graph. So we're to graph y equals 4 thirds x minus 2 minus 1, it's a teeny tiny bit tricky because the, the formula has a minus sign in front of the x, but a plus sign in front of the y. So what that means in the formula, if we have a minus sign in front of the x, that means that the x value is opposite. And opposite means like plus or minus. So if it is a minus, we will write a plus. If it is a plus, we will write a minus. So that's going to be opposite. And since there's a positive here in front of the y, that means the y value is the same sign. So x value is opposite sign, y value is same sign. So when we look at y equals 4 thirds x minus 2 minus 1, we're going to pull out our slope. And our slope is the 4 thirds that's in front of that parenthesis. And then we have to pull out a point. We have to pull out an ordered pair. So the x is going to be opposite of negative 2. And the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. But the y is going to be the same. So we will have negative 1. So that might take a little bit of memorization on your part to learn that. 2, negative 1 is a point on this graph. 2, negative 1. From this point, I'm going to graph up 4 over 3. Up 4 over 3. Or I can go down four over, th or left three. Down four, left three.
Okay, so now we're going to try on our own. <coughs> if you are watching this because you weren't in class, this would be an excellent chance to just pause the video and try it and then turn the video back on to check with my answers. So I need to find the slope, which is negative two, and the point, which we do the opposite of three, so negative three, and we do the same of one, positive one. So I will begin at negative three, one, and I will move. For my slope, I'm going to have to do negative 2 over 1. So I will go down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1, down 2, right 1. And as I'm doing this, I am thinking to myself, well, this was a negative slope, so it should be going downhill. Otherwise, I've made a mistake in my work. And then question six, <coughs> uh, the slope is five over two. And then the point, we're gonna begin at the opposite of negative five, so positive five, but the same for negative four, negative four. So I will graph five negative four. And then from this point, up five over four. And then I ran out of space. So I definitely, oh, I'm sorry, it's not over four. I don't have my white out on me right now. I have to get that out. Sorry about that. Up five over two. And then I'm gonna repeat that. Up five over two. Now I ran out of space, so I will also use down five, left two. Down five, left two. Okay. And there's that finished graph. <coughs> the very last form that we are looking at today, you've probably never used before, but it's a pretty interesting form. We've got x over a plus y over b equals one. And in this form, um, you will have to have a plus sign. You will have to have a plus sign here. And you have to have a positive one in this spot, or this trick that I'm about to tell you will not work. You have to have these two things or it's not gonna work. If we have these two things, we can find the x-intercept at a comma zero and the y-intercept at zero comma b. So for this first equation, x over five plus y over three equals one, I check it is a plus sign, it is equal to one, so now I can proceed. My x-intercept is five comma zero, the number that's under the five, I mean the, under the x. Y-intercept is zero comma three, and that's the number under the y. I can plot this, five, zero, and zero, three, and we just need two points to make a line, I can draw the straight line at this point. Before I grab my ruler, I do want to show you, you can find the slope by counting the rise over the run on the graph. So if I start here and I count, I'm going to go down next. You can see this line is going to go downhill, down to three, and then write one, two, three, four, five. Down three, write five, my slope is negative three fifths. I did not ask you to find the slope, like in um, when you type this into Canvas for your homework, um, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to find the slope between two points. And if you wanted to, you could now use the slope 
again to go one, two, three, one, two, three, or up three, left five, up three, left five to four points. So now you're going to try these good time to pause the video, but I've given you a couple tricks to look out for, so I've told you there's tricky stuff about this. So x over 6 minus y over 4 equals 1. First of all, it has to be plus sign here and then equals positive 1. This does not have a plus sign. So you have to manipulate the equation. Manipulate the equation is a big thing that we do. Manipulate the equation. We do this a lot in math to make things fit where maybe they didn't fit before or to make it easier for us to solve. So right here I'm going to manipulate it. Since I know that subtraction is the same thing as adding a negative, I'm just going to change it to x over 6 plus a negative 4 on the bottom, so I just move that into plus a negative, and I move the negative to the bottom instead of the top, equals 1. And now it is a plus sign and a 1 over here. So we can say that our x-intercept is 0, uh, just kidding, 6, 0, and our y-intercept is 0, negative 4. So on my graph, I will graph 6, 0 on the x, 0, negative 4 on the y. I can use my straight edge to connect that. And for good slope practice, if I start at this point and I go up 4, right 6, I would get 4 over 6. But that can be reduced. And if it can be reduced, you have to reduce it or you don't get it correct on Canvas. So make sure you do reduce to two-thirds. And then the last question, again, tr looking for tricky stuff. I've got a plus sign here, but now I have a negative over here. So I'm going to manipulate the equation a different way. Since it's an equation, if I do something to one side, like multiply it by negative 1, I have to do it to the other side. But if I do the same thing to both sides, it's still equal. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. On the right side, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we have our positive 1 over here. On the left side, um, negative 1 over 1 is the same as 1 over negative 1. So I'm really going to be multiplying everything by 1 over negative 1. That's going to give me x over negative 2 plus y over negative 2. So I've manipulated this equation so I have a plus sign and a positive 1. That makes my x-intercept at negative 2, 0 and my y-intercept at 0, negative 2. My x-intercept at negative 2, 0. My y-intercept at 0, negative 2. If I want to find some more points, I should find the slope first. So if I go down 2, right 2, down 2, right 2, and reduce that, I get a slope of negative 1. So that would be my slope. And I can go down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. Or I could go down two, right two. It's all going to be on the same graph. And there we have the finished last. Uh, just going to keep going on this video just to show you about Canvas. So on Canvas, under your modules, 
This is the teacher module, so it's going to look a little different for you. Under, I went way too far. One second. Linear notes with Desmos. You will see that practice entering your answers and uploading your notes slash worksheet here. So we went over how to use Adobe Scan in class to um, how we're going to use Adobe Scan with our phone in class. We're going to take pictures and we're going to upload our answers. But you're also going to type in your answers on Canvas. So when I click here, and I'll hit preview so it looks like a student, at the very top, there is a lot of words. All of these words are describing how you're going to type it into Canvas. For example, any time you enter more than a number, you will not use spaces. So if I were going to type in, if I were going to type in an ordered pair like the x-intercept, I would have to parenthesis negative two, comma zero parenthesis no spaces. Another thing that is important for you for today would be fractions need to be written with a backslash. So example, for one half, you would write that as one over two with a backslash. Do not change it to a decimal. It will mark it wrong. I think that's pretty much what you need to know about entering anything today. The rest of it's for later. When we go down here, you will see what is the slope. And you will go back to question one, where we wrote down slope is 2 over 5, y-intercept is 0, 0. And you will go and you will put 2 backslash 5, and you will put parentheses 0, comma 0, close parentheses. If you do not type it in that way, it will mark it wrong. When you have completed this assignment, question number nine says choose a file. And this is where you will go into your drive, which this is not my drive because I don't have a Chromebook. You will go into your drive and you will upload your work. You will see that is worth 33.36 points. So if uploading your work is 33.36 points, that means the other 66.64 points are from correct answers. So if you have a 66.64 when you submit it, that means you got 100% as long as your work is uploaded correctly. If you have any questions, contact me.